One of my favorite pastimes when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s was to watch Michael Jordan play basketball. And I remember that before every game, he would huddle his team together. And before every game, he would always ask his team the same question. And his team would also give the same response to that question. So when he brought his team together before the game, they huddled together, they all put their hands in the middle, and Michael Jordan would ask, what time is it? And the team would respond in unison, game time, who? <laughs> and really, what was, what was Jordan doing? He was trying to get his team excited. He was trying to get his team united for what was about to take place there on the basketball court. So I ask everybody this morning, what time is it? Now, some of you might think, well, pastor, it's uh, 1035. <laughs> actually, did you know that there's actually two different words in the Greek New Testament for time? Let me show you what I mean. There's two words for time in the Bible. One is chronos time, and the other one is kairos time. Let me explain to you what the difference is. Chronos time refers to a specific amount of time. For example, at what time does the service start? Does, that, does anybody know what time the service starts? It starts at 10 a.m. Oh, no wonder everybody shows up not on time. Maybe we just don't even know what time the service starts. So service starts at 10 a.m. And remember, I told you this before. If, if you think in your mind, I've got to be there by 10, you're going to be late. You're going to be late. No, no, no. It's not I've got to be there by 10. I have to leave my house by 9.30. Ah, okay. But that, that's, this is the, that's a separate sermon. Let's keep going with chronos time. So chronos time is a specific amount of time. The service starts at this time, and it'll end at this time today. But kairos time is different than chronos time in the Bible. Kairos time is about making the most of the time that's given to you in this place. God's word says in Ephesians 5, 16, redeeming the, let's say it together, time, kairos, because the days are evil. You see, kairos means that we see the opportunity that God is presenting to us, and then we respond by seizing the opportunity by making most of the time that God is giving us. So we know that the service is going to start at this time. The service is going to end at this time. But what Kairos time says is you are here today because you have a divine appointment with God. And your response to this reality should be speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen. We continue our study in the book of Esther and the title to our study is For Such a Time as This, which is so cool because we're actually looking at the passage here in Esther chapter 4. Look at how time flies. We're already in chapter 4. We're on our fourth sermon in this study. If you missed any of them, you could go back to our YouTube channel and watch it there. But today, what we're going to learn about Esther chapter 4 is this. Up until this time, we have only known how Esther became the queen. All the events that happened for her to become the queen. But today, we get to discover why she became the queen. And my prayer as we go through today's passage is that God will help us when it's Cairo's time to see the moment and seize the moment for the glory of God. So this is what we have before us today. Let's begin with...